afternoon, Howard Wig, Think Tech Hawaii, Code Green. We all are aware that the military has by nature it's got to be a huge consumer of energy, but they are doing a lot where they can to promote energy efficiency. And nowhere maybe is that more uh, evident than in rapid deployment. That's where the military gets a sudden call to go to usually a remote spot and set up really quickly. And that involves getting helicopters there and that involves getting planes there. That would seem to be a major, major, massive energy consumer, except that my guest today, Jeff Verenkamp of Gold Wings Supply and others have devised a method or a technology for lighting this rapid deployment space in an incredible energy efficient and resource efficient manner. So welcome to the show, Jeff. And Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Being very innovative. Wow. So why don't you just start at uh, step one and tell us what the challenges that you faced and the solutions that, that you found? Sure. So Gold Wing Supply, we're actually more, I would view as more as like a value-added reseller. So we have uh, partners that have these various technologies that we typically focus on green energies, quick deployment, um, solar being a, a primary platform. And then we integrate these and come in with mm -hmm. creative, innovative solutions to bring all these technologies together to bring a total solution to our partner. In many cases, it is the Department of Defense, but uh, we do have several of other government agencies and uh, municipality agencies that we support as well. And in this particular case, you're doing, you're dealing with uh, lighting, and we that all know correct. that uh, LED so lighting is way, way, way more efficient than the lighting we grew up with. And you uh, have made massive use of yes. LED lighting. What, what, what do you need to light when you set up a rapid deployment site? A place to uh, set it up. It, it, they're all self-contained and um, they are very quickly deployed and they are movable by hand so that it doesn't take heavy equipment, doesn't take a lot of skilled labor. So it's, uh, it's something that the Department of Defense has migrated to very rapidly. Mm -hmm. And this is being... Um, kitted and deployed around multiple bases around the country in pre pre preparation for the inevitable or what may be an emergency. So there's, uh, there's a lot of elements that come into this, uh, this solution. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'm thinking about is weight. You have to carry a heck of a lot of stuff to this site. And in the old days, you used that used to include a heck of a lot of fuel, barrels and barrels of fuel. Now I believe that your lighting is taken care of by photovoltaic panels plus maybe battery storage. Is that yes, the case? That is correct. So the the legacy systems were were hardwired. So if you can imagine trying to put in a six thousand or ten thousand foot runway. Um, you would have these legacy systems that had massive generators that required a significant fuel supply. Um, you'd have a tremendous amount of labor running out spools of wire, skilled labor that's having to interconnect all of these. And um, when you get done with the entire system, you've deployed 30,000 feet of cable, connectorized it, interfaced it with, with generators put uh, control circuits on that and put everything connected to the various lighting devices for the airfield, whether it's runway, threshold, taxiway, um, touchdown, whatever it is. And it would take four, six, seven weeks to, to deploy that. Ooh. So with the new systems that we've um, 
brought to the to their attention. Um, they're able to honestly for a helipad, you could technically deploy a helipad in 30 minutes, and that would be fully controllable by the uh, pilot, where the pilot has the ability to control the intensity of the lighting, as well as if it's a very um, covert or secret mission, they can switch everything to infrared and they can put on their night vision goggles and have everything operating just with the click of their mic. So now it's much quicker. For a 10,000 foot runway to put it in perspective, you know, a constant current um, system that we spoke about earlier would take four to six weeks. They can deploy an entire runway in less than two weeks which would enable them to bring in C5As, C17, C130s, to bring in massive deployment of heavy equipment, troops, supplies. So it's a, it's a much, much more rapid deployment um, system that's capable. Um, and I think the other key element of this is that it is expeditionary, so they can set it up very quickly. They can also tear it down recontainerize it in the mobile trailer and move it to a new location. So if the um, mission has been accomplished or they need to move it to a new location, they're able to tear this down, relocate it, and reuse the same system, have it back in operation very quickly. Wow. Do you know if other nations are, are emulating this system now? This is deployed worldwide. I mean, the U.S. is really in the forefront of this. And, um, you know, probably the biggest element that changed this was, you know, in the in the legacy days of the military, they had mil spec. So everything was mil spec. So they owned the design. They kind of drove the technology. The downside of that is that it also uh, forced them to own the design flaws. They weren't keeping up with the latest technology. It was much more costly. So they've kind of converted over and said, okay, this is this is not working for us. They went to what they call COTS, which is commercial off the shelf. So now we're going commercial off the shelf, um, which has leading edge technology that's available in the market today, um, much lower production costs, much higher quality. Um, supply chain is much more stable. So it enables them to get these products quicker because they're not mill spec. So they're able to get these with normal supply chain lead times and, and get their, these products a lot quicker. Wow. Yeah, the, I, this is a classic example of following the latest, latest trends in technological improvements and taking advantage of them very, very rapidly. Now, if you look at the total weight involved, you you specified the time involved down from seven weeks to two weeks. And yeah, just the weight of carrying all that old stuff. Everything's got to be much, much lighter. So it, does one solar panel control one light or does one solar panel go out to a, a gang of lights or how, how does that work? So each light is self-contained and it has four panels on, on all four sides. So it's omnidirectional from a, both a solar absorption as well as a light dispersion. So if you can imagine something being maybe a little bit larger than say a milk carton, you set that out, that thing um, starts absorbing sun. It has batteries in it. <clears throat> it has uh, wireless networks in, engaged in it. Um, it has uh, technology that manages the solar charging of it. So it, it takes it, you put it out, and it will run. Dust to dawn, there's a, a graphic of it. So these things, they, they will run dust to dawn. They have 14 days of battery storage capability, what we call autonomy. Um, it also has a manual control on it, so you can check the charge status. You can put it in a intensity of output. You can change it over to infrared. And you can put it into a uh, wireless mode, which would be picked up by the handheld controller, then either ground contro control uh, crew or the pilot are able to control these um, remotely and it'll illuminate, change the intensity or go to infrared or turn it off 
in, um, you know, any location, whether you're in the air or on the ground. Wow, you can control it from, from the air also. Yep. It's a VHF Ooh. radio that, that comes from the pilot. They go to a frequency. They use mic clicks to determine the intensity levels um, and a different mic click pattern, and it will change the light. So the pilot has full control of it, and they can kind of set it up the way they want that works best for them. Wow. Well, Jeff, you've uh, got some uh, slides to show us also. I do. I yeah. do. So I'll, I'll uh, help uh, articulate what the, what this narrative has been about and give you a little bit of a visual perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've kind of talked about, you know, the different types of uh, what the, the basically expeditionary airfield lighting is all about, but it's it's basically the ability to quickly deploy um, a runway or a vertical takeoff and landing site to deploy equipment and resources, whether it's men or uh, food or whatever it is. They also have, uh, it's also critical for if they have to do extraction missions, if they have uh, war fighters that are out in the field. They need to extract them. They can bring them in and just bring in helicopters and just pull them out real quickly, medical extractions. But the key element is that it, it gives you the ability to set it up very rapidly. And adversely, if you get into uh, removing the mission or mission's been accomplished at your current location, we can pack it back up and, and move it to a new location. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. So um, we kind of talked about this a little bit. The, the legacy systems had a lot of cabling, a lot of electronics required specialty labor. You kind of look at the one graphic in the middle there. I mean, it's a spaghetti factory is what it is and trying to untangle this. And keep in mind that the warfighter traditionally, you know, a lot of these uh, warfighters that are handling this equipment are between 18 and 25 years old. Most of them have no college experience or college degree. So they're just straight out of high school, gone into the military, and they're having to handle this stuff. So it gets very clumsy and cumbersome and uh, not very quick to deploy. Jeff, when you refer to legacy, basically what you mean is old-fashioned in, in this case. Yeah, it is old-fashioned. Yeah. It's kind mm -hmm. of what they... The old school. And so the beauty of technology that advances very quickly... Um, and this, and honestly, just kind of a setback is that this whole technology started with um, a self-contained lantern that was developed for the Canadian Coast Guard. I actually worked for the company that developed this first technology. So they, they put this on top of a buoy to give mariners a visual perspective of, uh, you know, the, the marker before it had solar panels mounted on it, it had batteries, had lights. So they took this technology and said, hey, why don't we use this for the airfield as well? We can use this similar technology. That technology advancement brought it into the airfield lighting arena with a very similar technology. Mm -hmm. So being that it was maritime to start with, it's fully waterproof. Yeah. So these are fully waterproof. We've, I've seen airfields completely underwater. And then when they dry out, everything works just fine. So it's all good. Yeah, I, I knew. Uh, your boss, the owner, Leah Hunt, back when she first brought this online, and I think this was the first company in America to bring this technology online, the marine technology you're referring to. Correct, correct. Yeah. So, um, yeah, thanks for highlighting that. Mm -hmm. So, if you can step back to the slides, let me walk through this, and I'll give you a little bit more. Next slide, please. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, you know, kind of the the legacy was, you know, mill spec sourcing strategy. So mm -hmm. the mill military owned the design, they own the supply chain, they own the intellectual property. So it just made for it to be very cumbersome. So they've moved to, um, you know, and this has taken some time. This is probably 10 years ago. It's like, look, you really need to look at commercial off the shelf. This is commercially available. This technology is right exactly what you're looking for. And we can take care of this for you with a commercial build structure that 
we can manage for you. Much quicker lead times, lower costs, everything. So they moved to the commercial off the shelf. And that's what enabled us to bring these new products to their um, <clears throat> introduction. And ultimately, they have adopted it. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. So, um, you know, as I've kind of highlighted, there's all kinds of advantages with going commercial off the shelf. There's commercially available and commoditized components that make it much lower cost. Um, we've got multi-source components, so it's not just a single source. You have multiple sources that are making similar LEDs, um, circuits, batteries, solar panels, et cetera. So it's much more available. Volume production, because we this is used in um, multiple um, either municipalities or DOD. It's used by the forestry department where they need to use it to bring in aircraft or helicopters for refueling or reloading. So it's used across a, a various array of government agencies. So it's readily available. It's all ISO 9000 you know, produced. So it's, uh, and the product reliability testing because there's so much field deployment is very strong and, and supports the uh, the low failure rate. So it's uh, it's a solid direction for them to to uh, adopt. So this is just kind of a quick snapshot of the various um, solar technologies that we're utilizing. Um, up in the upper left, you'll see those are actually the solar self-contained lanterns, as we call them. Um, below that is the wind sock. That's all solar operated as well. So that illuminates at nighttime so they can see the wind direction. Um, for more permanent um, deployments when they're going to be in a location um, for, you know, a year plus, they'll put in runway signs and directional signs to give them um, because it's much more like an international airport, just running product and, and uh, resources in and out of the airport. On the right is the what we call the RCAL, which is the air to ground radio um, system, solar operated as well. So in the upper right corner, you'll see a what we call a PAPI system. It's a precision approach path indicator, tells the pilot if they're on the glide slope below or above. Um, and then all of this equipment, except for the signs, is loaded into the trailer. So that trailer carries all of the uh, the the uh, airfield lights and all the installation hardware. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. So the lights, um, they are omnidirectional. They run dusk to dawn. They have 14 days of battery storage capability. So if you basically have a blackout, heavy storms, it will still work dusk to dawn for 14 days and no problem. But that really doesn't happen. So we've had virtually operations where the these lights weren't run for five, six, seven years until they have to replace the battery. So they work very well. And again, they're wireless uh, connected with a 900 megahertz radio. So next uh, slide. This is the solar wind cone. They're called the L806, L807. L807 is the primary, L806 is the secondary. It has a uh, light that's illuminating inside of the wind cone. And this as well can be interfaced with the uh, wireless controller, runs dust to dawn. So it's all self-contained. Um, these, you can set these up in probably 30 minutes. Uh, we're mm -hmm. on a regular airfield that would take you a couple weeks because you have to run wire and conduit yeah. and trenching. Yeah. Uh, and, and these are the signs, again, these are more for when there's a long deployment um, airfield that they're gonna utilize, but it still gives them the ability to have um, removal and reinstallation very quickly. So it works well, works with the, the wireless controller as well. So this has kind of two configurations depicted here. The upper two slides reflect, this is the RCAL. This is more for a permanent location that they're gonna utilize for a long period of time. It's got a cabinet with batteries, 
with the uh, receiver and transceiver in it, uh, which is that red box. And then it has a solar panel that charges that. So that enables the pilot to communicate with the airfield from its uh, VHF radio. The, the photo below is actually the RCAL unit that's installed inside of the trailer. So once that trailer rolls out to a location, it's already mounted there and it just, it, you activate it and it's running. So it's very quick deployable um, to have that thing set up in the trailer. This is the, uh, the precision of approach path indicator and uh, HAPI, which is a helicopter approach uh, path indicator. We do both of them. So it, it enables the pilot to know if they're on glide slope, high or low. So the left graphic kind of depicts what the PAPI looks like. If it's all white, you're way too high. If it's all red, you're way too low. If you have a red white, you're right on the glide slope. Relative to the happy on the right, it's a little bit different configuration. It's more of a red green. So if it's flashing green, you're way too high. Flashing red, it's way too low. And if you're solid green, you're right on the glide slope and the helicopter can just come right in. Pitch black, no lights, infrared um, configuration. They can see everything just fine. It just come right in with no uh, obstruction or, uh, or hazard. That probably saves a whole lot of lives because in rapid deployment, you're in a very uncertain, sometimes chaotic situation. That is correct. And, wow. and additionally, these aircraft are not cheap, right? I mean, they're very expensive. So mm -hmm. protecting those assets is very important as well. So this is the trailer. So it's, as I've indicated, it, it everything fits in there. You'll see the RCAL on the left side. That's the air to ground radio. The next graphic next to it is the all of the installation tools and parts to install those on a runway. And then you can also, if you want the trailer designed, you can plug it into a 30 amp shore power and it will charge all of the lights while it's just sitting there. So it keeps them all brimmed up so that when you deploy, they're at a hundred percent. Small graphic above that is every light is connected with a cable. So they're all connected to either the shore power or on top of the trailer, there's solar panels as well. So it charges if it's sitting outside or you're rolling this down the road on the back of a Humvee, it's getting charged at the same time. So it's always ready for deployment at 100% capacity with the battery strength. Uh, one of the most recent um, tests that we had accomplished is what they call sling load testing. So for even quicker deployment, they can just lift these trailers up with a sling load on a helicopter, move this to a location, set it down, hook it up to a Humvee, tow it short distances, and you're setting up the airfield. So, I mean, they can deploy this very quickly. So having done that, although this is utilized for the Department of Defense, this is also a dual use technology. And what that means is that it's good for uh, Department of Defense, but it's also good for civilian usage as well. So for example, these uh, the trailer with the airfield lighting, this can also be utilized for firefighting. This could be used in national disaster where we have earthquakes, decimates a region. You can bring it to set up airfields or vertical takeoff and landing sites for helicopters to bring in medical food supplies, emergency services. So it's very possible to utilize this in the um, private sector as well. A couple other products that we um, do represent are solar outdoor lighting. So we have solar bollards in the middle that light up pathways. And then we also have solar street or pathway lighting in that right graphic. We also utilize this at the Department of Defense so they don't have to run generators on it. They just mount these in the ground, hook them up, takes about 30 minutes to set up a solar light. They run dust to dawn, um, or you can turn them off with a, actually an iPhone um, interface app, and they can light up uh, the barracks area, perimeter fences around the uh, airfield, or in a commercial sector, um, if we go to the next slide, we've been, um, 
very integral in the rebuilding of the Lahaina community. So they have the Ohana Hope uh, project, and they've set up these small communities with small houses, with uh, community kitchens, community bathrooms. So they get these communities back intact and as a community unit. And then we've actually had several of these solar lights put around there for pathway for safety, pedestrian walking, for street lights for the parking lot and for area lighting. So <clears throat> the dual use technology, military, civilian, um, state, municipality, it's all usable in all of those arenas. So um, that's the innovation that we bring uh, with this solar technology. Do you know approximately how many people are being housed in these communities in Lahaina? Well, we're on phase three right now, but I know that um, there's probably, it depends on the size of them, but the first one was kind of the test unit, but I think they had like 100 families that they put in there. And then they are branching out. We're actually in the stage three and stage four. They're starting to deploy more and more of these communities out there to bring them out of the hotels and back into their community so they can um, carry on with their with their lives. Yeah, that's that's so impressive. And we've got to wrap up, but I'm thinking of the horrible earthquake recently in Japan. They certainly could have used this technology to bring in helicopters and provide people with food, shelter, and whatnot. You know, it's cool over there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, on that very cheery note, we have to wrap up. Thank you so much, Jeff Baron Camp of Goldwing Supply. This is technological advance on steroids, and everybody, especially Americans, are benefiting. So thank you so much, Jeff. You're See very you welcome. Time. Thank you for having me. Think Tech Hawaii. Bye-bye.